had our holiday break last time. Okay, we stopped at, uh, we have uh, started the subtopic of alkenes, um, but unfortunately we did not uh, able to finish. Okay, we, uh, we only managed to cover four of the reaction of alkenes. Uh, we have one reaction left, which is the hydration. Okay, so before we go into that, I'm going to uh, do some recap on what we have learned so far. Okay, uh, uh, related to previous week ataupun the last week that we had uh, before we had our holiday. Okay, all right. So, um, alkenes basically undergoes electrophilic addition. Okay, in general, alkenes undergoes electrophilic addition. Why is that so? Because of the presence of double bond. Okay, so this pi bond will be broken down and each carbon will then have an extra bond. Okay, uh, so uh, and then the uh, the atom will be added to the uh, both carbon that initially had double bond just now. Okay, uh, so we have addition reaction for electro electrophilic addition reaction for alkenes. Okay, but for alkenes last time, uh, it is a substitution reaction. And to be to be specific, it should be a free radical substitution reaction. Okay, all right. So uh, firstly, we have catalytic hydrogenation. So these are the conditions that you need to, 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 to take note. Uh, uh, it need to be, uh, the, the catalyst need to be present. Okay, if not, um, the, the hydrogenation will not take place. Okay, all right. So then next we have halogenation in inert solvent. Okay, uh, so uh, in, for inert solvent, uh, normally we would use CCl4 or CH2Cl2 or sometimes ethane. Okay, uh, so it can uh, we can also use ethane to represent the inert solvent. Okay, so for this one also, you have to specify whether you are using inert solvent or CCl4 or CH2Cl2 or you use water, okay, bromine in water. Uh, even though uh, the main reagent used is bromine, but the solvent use is not the same. Okay, so different in solvent use will lead to different product form. Okay, so that is why you have to specify. Okay, uh, all right. So for halogenation in inert solvent, both Br, okay, both halogen will be added into the molecule. Okay, and then next we have um, halogenation in water. Okay, for halogenation in water, we have halogen and also hydroxyl. Okay, halogen and also hydroxyl uh, will be added into the molecule. Okay, all right, so that is for halogenation in water. Um, so during this halogenation in water, okay, uh, we have options. Okay, we have uh, 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 the possibility of product, a uh, few possibilities of product that can be formed. So in, in order to determine uh, which product will be the major product or minor product, okay, we have a rule to decide on that. So that rule is known as Markovnikov rule. Okay, uh, so we have Markovnikov rules. Um, okay, and also for hydrohalogenation. Okay, uh, so hydrohalogenation, uh, kita dah start at the hydrogen and halogen. Okay, uh, so again, we will have uh, options there. So, uh, we uh, so between hydrogen and halogen, which one will be placed at which carbon? Uh, ada option yang macam tu. So for that, for that case, in this case, we have to have a rule that help us to decide. Okay, so which atom will be placed to which carbon? Okay, so that is what we call Markovnikov rule. This is Markovnikov. Uh, so during hydrohalogenation, okay, hydrohalogenation, we have hydrogen and also halogen. So hydrogen and also halogen will be added to the 
uh, carbon carbon double bond just now. Okay. Uh, so do uh, okay for hydrohalogenation we have mechanism. Okay, for hydrogenation, uh, halogenation in, in a solvent, halogenation in water. For these three reactions, we don't have mechanism. Okay, in our syllabus, of course, every reaction has its own mechanism. But the focus for our syllabus is more on, uh, for alkenes, we are more focusing on the hydrohalogenation and hydration later on. Okay, all right. So for hydrohalogenation, we have mechanism. Okay, so please take note on this. Uh, step one is when the nucleophile attack the electrophile. The nucleophile is the double bond. Okay, double bond. It, uh, why is it called nucleophile? Because it is rich in electron. Because it has high density of electron at the double bond. So it will attack the electrophile. Okay, when electrophile is attacked, that means electrophile will be added into the molecule. So one of the carbon will have the electrophile, whereas the other carbon will uh, will will become carbocation as intermediate just for a while. Okay, uh, but so it will become carbocation. Um, so carbocation is unstable because why carbon should uh, the stable form of carbon should have four bonds okay but now when it become carbocation it only has three bond so it is unstable okay and then the, the nucleophile will then attack the, the the electrophile so the carbocation next will become the electrophile Okay, uh, so the carbocation now dia akan jadi electrophile then the nucleophile will then attack the carbocation and add itself to the carbon. Okay, All right. So uh, Markovnikov is based on the stability of carbocation. Okay, it is based on the stability of carbocation. So, uh, so the most stable form of carbocation the carbocation itself is not stable, okay. But among this um, unstable carbocation, the most stable form will be the tertiary carbocation, lah. Okay, the tertiary carbocation. Then secondary, primary, and methyl carbocation are very very unstable. Okay, they are not preferable. Okay, during the reaction. All right, so. Um, you have what you need to do is you have to first okay from the alkene given to you from the structure of alkene you have to identify both carbon the the degree of both carbon you can identify dulu okay the degree of both carbon okay so this is primary carbon because it is attached to only to only this carbon whereas this carbon is secondary carbon Okay, secondary carbon. So we have H dengan Br. So Br will be attached to the one that has less hydrogen. Siapa cakap? Markovnikov cakap. Sebab dia akan more stable. Because this later, kalau you proceed to mechanism, it will form carbocation. So the hydrogen will first added, be added to the carbon that has more hydrogen. Okay, the gang lah. Hydrogen akan add dekat kawasan yang banyak hydrogen. Bromine ataupun halogen ataupun later we have high, high OH. Okay, it it will be added to the to the side that has more uh, uh, less hydrogen, less substituted. Okay, uh, so this is uh, primary carbocation. Kalau this is unstable lah because it form uh, apa nama tu? Uh, primary carbocation. So this actually will not be formed. Dia tidak, tidak akan terjadi sebab primary carbocation is very unstable. This is very, very, uh, this is not preferable. Okay. Alright. So, dia akan choose this, this, this one. This akan jadi major product. Okay. Alright. So, hydrogen akan attach here. This is the, the added hydrogen. So, the bromine will be attached to this carbon. So, first, Dia akan jadi carbocation dulu, and then the bromide will attack the the secondary carbocation. Okay, this is more stable compared to 
this one. This is unstable. So this is not form. Okay. Uh, so apa yang you kena buat dulu adalah you identify dulu. Okay. Uh, dekat double bond tu. Okay. You identify. Okay. This is kalau based on this. This is secondary carbon. So this is also secondary carbon. Betul tak? So kalau secondary carbon. Both of them have second. Uh, both of both of them are also secondary. That means dia akan form sama banyak. Equal amount. Same degree of substitution. Maksudnya this is secondary. This is also secondary. So dia akan form sama banyak. Okay. Sebab dua-dua secondary. Dia akan form secondary carbocation. So both pun dia punya stability pun are equally the same. Tapi if you have option contohnya. Primary dengan secondary. You have, if you have primary and secondary. So, dia, the, the reaction will not have primary carbocation. Okay, will not undergo the primary carbocation. So, dia akan only form the secondary carbocation. Okay. Apatah, apatah lagi kalau ada primary dengan tertiary. Of course, dia akan form the tertiary. So, what I want to highlight here is that Primary will not be formed lah. Senang cerita. Carbocation, kalau you identify, oh, this is primary. Okay. Uh, that means the halogen will not be attached there. The halogen will not be attached to that carbon yang primary tu. Okay. So, dia hanya akan attach dekat either secondary ataupun tertiary. So, if another example, you ada tertiary dengan secondary. Like this one. You ada, this is secondary kan? Satu. Dua. How about this one? This is tertiary. Satu, dua, tiga. Betul tak? Ha, so kalau you ada tertiary dengan secondary. ah This time around you will have minor and major product. Minor and major product. Major, so dia akan form dekat tertiary. Maksudnya the bromine will attach itself to the, the tertiary carbon. I mean the tertiary ter carbocation will be formed lah. And this product will be the final product. So as minor is the secondary carbocation, and the bromine will be attached to the the secondary carbon. Okay, all right. That is all. Okay, for uh the apa the last the last lecture that we had before our uh raya break. Okay, alright, so now let's move on to hydration. Okay, hydration. Basically, we, we want to add water. Okay, it's still electrophilic addition, so we want to add water. So in water, we have H plus and OH minus. So these two will be added into alkene. So for example, okay, so this is alkene, right? So we have water. Okay, so the reagent. Okay, uh, the condition. Uh, so, in order to perform this hydration reaction, uh, the, the reaction need to be in acidic condition. It needs to be in acidic condition. If not, the product, our interest product will not be formed. Okay, like I said last time, if you want to, uh, if you want to produce, if you want to uh, make asam pedas dengan curry, so both apa nama ni apa makanan both lauk ni berbeza dia punya ingredient. So you have to be specific. Okay, so different ingredient may produce different uh, different meal. Okay, different masakan. So you have to be specific. Okay, katakanlah you tahu you letak water aja. Tapi in order for water to be added into alkene, it need to be in acidic condition. If not, the reaction will not take place. And in fact, okay, acid behave as catalyst. Okay, acid facilitate the, the reaction. Without acid, let's just assume that the reaction will not take place. Ataupun terlampau lama sangat. Okay, uh, so it, 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 it is not feasible. Uh, so you have to specify. Okay, so H2O, so normally we would use H3PO4 with the presence of heat. 
Okay, uh, so later on H2O ni, dia akan combine, dia akan react with H3O, H3PO4 to produce H3O+. Okay, alternative to this, okay, alternative to this, sometimes for hydration, we can use this, uh, H3O+. So it is understood that the reaction need to be in acidic condition and it has water in it. Okay, they boleh simplify in this form, H3O plus dengan heat. Okay, so you may use H3O file and heat and don't forget the water lah. Or you can also use H3O plus or heat. Okay, alright. So, uh, when this reaction takes place, OH will be added to the ET into, the, into alkenes to produce. This is what we call alcohol. Okay, uh, right. So this is basically the the general scheme for hydration reaction. Okay, it produces alcohol. Right. So for unsymmetrical alkene, okay. So this is symmetrical. Okay, when you try to break, uh, you you divide this into two, you basically produce the same side. Okay, you produce the same uh nama tu, like mirror image of these two. Okay, uh, but this is unsymmetrical. Bila you you try to break down this one, you akan dapat like dua product yang berbeza. Uh, so this is what we call unsymmetrical. So if unsymmetrical alkenes is used as starting material, okay, so how do we predict the product form? Because H2O will produce, will have H plus and OH minus. So these two will be added into the, into the uh, molecule. So, siapa nak letak dekat, dekat which carbon, OH nak letak to which carbon. Okay, so that's why we have this Markovnikov. Macam biasa, Markovnikov, uh, they stress on the stability of the double bond. It's basically the same as what we have learned for hydrohalogenation last time. Sama saja, it's just that dia punya, dia punya reagent use is not different. Okay, so identify. So, this is primary carbon, right? This is secondary carbon. So hydrogen will be attached to the side that had to the carbon that has more hydrogen. OH will be attached to the carbon that has less hydrogen ataupun more substituted. Okay, all right. So that's why OH is attached to this carbon and hydrogen is attached to this carbon. So this is alcohol. Okay, all right, moving on. Okay, now let's look at in terms of mechanism. Mechanism dia basically sama dengan hydrohalogenation just now. It's just that dia guna water. Okay, All right. Like I said, H2O, this is the how, uh, why do we why do we need to use H3PO4 as one of the reagent? Okay, so H2O react with H3PO4, so it will produce H3O plus and this byproduct. Okay, uh, so this is the this is the one that we want in the reaction. Okay, so it creates this one. This one. They create this electrophile. Okay, so it creates this electrophile, which later on the nucleophile ataupun the alkene will attack the electrophile. Huh? So that's why we need this H2O and H3O4 ataupun we need H3O plus lah. Okay, we need H3O plus because H3O plus will then re behave as electrophile. Okay, the alkene, the propene, it will attack the hydrogen from the hydronium ion. Attack as in the not that hydrogen. Okay, the not that hydrogen. So this hydrogen will be removed. Tapi before they not remove too, can the this hydrogen belongs to this? oxygen right so when this double bond attack the hydrogen so this bond need to be broken down okay so bila dia di di uh, break down the shared electron ini kan bond kan so electron yang they share tu kan they share dua electron so both electron shared will be given back to the owner which is the which which is the which is the oxygen 
be given back to the oxygen. So kita memang pakai dua dua apa nama tu? Aeroful dah sekarang ni. Okay, during alkene saja kita pakai half half aero. Next until the end of this topic kita akan pakai full aero. Simple. Tak payah nak pening-pening nak hafal bila nak pakai full aero, bila nak pakai uh, half headed aero. Alkene saja kita pakai half headed aero. The rest, all the mechanism later on will be using okay, the full headed aero. Alright? Okay, so this bond will be broken down so both of the electron will be given to the oxygen. So dapatlah hydrogen ni masuk. So hydrogen will be will be attached to so this is primary, this is secondary kan. Will be attached to the primary carbon first. Okay, this is based on Markovnikov because it formed a stable carbocation which is a secondary carbocation lah. Okay, right. So this is one of the byproduct form. Okay, so ini kan tadi dah 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 remove so dia jadi H2O lah with two lone pairs. Okay, so initially dia, dia H3O plus dia, dia ada plus, ada charge plus dekat situ. Positive charge dekat situ. Why is it positive? Because sepatutnya dia ada dua lone pair. So one of the lone pair tu, water ni tadi, kan dia ada dua lone pair. So one of the lone pair is used to make bond with H. So now dia hanya ada satu lone pair saja. So that's why dia ada positive charge. Sebab neutral dia, dia sepatutnya ada dua lone pair. Okay, ah tu neutral. Tapi kalau dia dah gunakan one of the lone pair to form bond, so that's why it has positive charge on the central. Okay, alright. So this is the formation of carbocation for the first step. Very essential, okay, very important. The next, the secondary carbocation which is our intermediate from the previous reaction. Okay. Alright. So this is secondary carbocation. Basically it is an electrophile. Because the lack of electron. This carbon has lack of electron. Okay. Alright. So next the nucleophile will attack the carbocation. Orang yang kaya dengan elektron akan attack orang yang miskin dengan elektron. So the nucleophile which is water will attack the carbocation basically it will add itself to the carbon tak masuk macam ni dia masuk as a whole dia bukan putus-putus eh kita tahu yang dia akan form OH later on tapi this is the step first before they become OH dia sebenarnya attach itself as a whole to the carbon secara keseluruhan dulu so dia akan jadi begini Attach semua ni. So as you can see, dia dapat balik positive charge dia. Sebab now the lone pair, one of the lone pair is used to form bond with the carbon. Okay, the form bond dengan carbon. So dia ada tiga bond with one less lone pair. So that's why dia ada positive charge. Bila dia ada positive, ada negative charge, dia consider unstable. Sepatutnya dia kena neutral. Okay, so this is considered unstable. Again, it is as intermediate. Okay, uh, in order to become, nanti dia, dia buang one of the hydrogen, dia jadi OH. Uh, um, apa nama tu, in order to to finally form that final product, dia kena lalu this process first. Okay, alright, so this is intermediate. Then later on, H2O, another H2O, okay, will attack the hydrogen. So this part dia plus kan. So bila part ni dia plus, dia sebenarnya electrophile. Kawasan ni adalah electrophilic. So it is prone to uh, nucleophile attack. Okay, so the nucleophile which is a H2O will attack one of the hydrogen. Maksudnya dia nak remove the hydrogen, dia nak tarik the hydrogen out from the molecule. So, bila nak tarik the hydrogen, so the bond between hydrogen and oxygen will be broken down. So, both of the electron yang share tu untuk form bond tu will be given to oxygen. Tu, dia bagi dekat oxygen. Okay. 
right? So, dia bagi dekat oksigen and finally it become, it has only two bonds. O, eh, apa? This O is attached to this carbon and another bond with this hydrogen. So, sebenarnya dia ada dua long pair dekat situ that are not shown. So, this is stable. Okay? Uh, so, dia ada extra step sikit for hydration. Dia ada dekat sini. Sebenarnya, before dia form the O, kish. Okay, dia akan masuk. Ni, this part. Dia akan masuk ke seluruhannya. Attach everything. Okay? Everything will be attached to the carbon. The oxygen lah. Okay? Will be attached to the carbon. And then later on, another H2O attack the hydrogen. Maksudnya, the hydrogen will be removed out from the molecule. Okay, so the low, the the bond, the shared electron just now, okay, will be given back to the oxygen. Ah, uh, then jadi lah the OH. Atul. So this is the byproduct. As you can see, the hydrogen is taken, okay, is taken away. So uh, and it will form bond with this H2O, and this is the byproduct, the hydronium ion form. Okay, all right. So hope everybody. Um, is able to 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 catch ataupun to get what uh, what we have learned for hydration just now. Okay, so let's try out checkpoint 15. Ada soalan ke? Kalau ada soalan boleh tanya. Eh? Okay, you nak A ke nak B? Nak try out. Uh, Sorry? Hello? Hello? Hmm? Uh, uh, yang tak tu kan ada untuk step 3 tu yang second uh, uh, yang tu mm -hmm. second step 3 yang dalam uh, molekul lain ni yang dalam uh, reaction tu ni tak dengar lah tak clear boleh ulang balik tak saya check saya review oh, ok alright ok try again ha uh. uh. Uh, yang second H2O tu, itu yang dalam memang dah dalam reaction tu memang dah ada lah. Hmm. Hmm. Dalam reaction tu dah ada. Ha, jangan, jangan ingat semua akan jadi H3O plus. Okay. Dalam tu ada water. Water maksudnya bil macam ni eh. So kita ada water and also H3PO4. Okay. Some of the water may react with H3PO4. So this is considered as diluted tau. Okay, so not not all H2O react with H3PO4 to form H3PO+. Not all. Okay, some of it will react with H3PO4 to produce H3PO+. So we need this the presence of this H3PO+. Because why? Dia akan behave sebagai electrophile. But at the same time, we need H2O as well. Okay, we need H2O too because it is also involved in the reaction later. Okay. Ah, So, bila, that's why, bila dia, dia kata H2O, sebenarnya H2O lagi banyak daripada H3PO5, eh, H, daripada the acid itself. Sebab H3PO4 tu is just to create an acidic condition. Okay, dia tak perlu pekat. Dia tak perlu concentrated sangat. It's just to create that hydronium ion. Because this hydronium ion yang akan initiate the reaction later on. Okay, nah, kalau tak baik dia cakap concentrated. So kalau dia cakap diluted, kalau dia tak cakap lah diluted pun, uh, kalau dia cakap diluted, that means kita tahu a lot of molecule, uh, water molecule in the in the apa in the solution. Kalau dia tak cakap pun diluted, kita tahu dalam tu ada water juga. Okay, uh, unless dia cakap concentrated, concentrated pun sebenarnya ada water dalam tu. Cuma solidnya lagi banyak daripada water. Uh, itu maksud concentrated. Tapi tak bermakna everything pun tak there's no water. Bila kalau tak ada water, kita tak boleh kita tak panggil dia solution if water is a solvent lah. Okay? Ha. Oh, so macam tu kira ni dia step one dan step two uh, preparation sebelum kita proses untuk alcohol punya reaction lah kan untuk produce alcohol tu. The preparation sebelum. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, step one and step two ni dia punya, uh, dia dia kena undergo this step in order to produce the final product which is the alcohol. Okay, itu ke yang awak tanya? Ah, 
You kena lalu this process Dia tak boleh pump jadi alkohol ha, Sebab Okay sebab Soalan tanya mekanism Kalau soalan tak tanya mekanism Soalan tanya draw the product form Ah, Terus je lah produce alkohol Faham? Kalau soalan tanya show the mechanism So you kena show from the beginning Okay uh, With alkene react with High uh, I mean go through apa Undergoes the uh, Apa nama ni hydration Okay, from uh, step one until step three tu. Tapi kalau soalan tanya, draw the product form. Kita just, kita tahu maksudnya kita tak perlu tunjukkan mekanism. Kita just need to draw the final product form which is the alcohol. Okay, nah, dia yang, yang scary part would be the mechanism lah. But you kena show every, every step. Lagi satu kan tunjuk every step. You kena make sure that you have the Arrow sah. Tak ada arrow, tolak markah. Mekanism mesti ada arrow. Okay, arrow ni kena cukup. Ni kan macam kronologi kan, dia attack. Attack. And then this one will be broken. Dia nak ambil dia ni, tapi kan dia ni ada bond. So, ni kena break down first. Both of electron which come from the bond will be given to siapa yang nak ambil electron tu. Takkan main ambil je macam tu, what happened to the electron? So, both of the electron will be given back to the central. So, now central akan ada dua lone pair. So, what happened? The, the uh, apa nama tu? So, hydrogen will attach to one of the carbon. So, what happened to the other carbon? So, the other carbon tu kena tunggu kejap. Uh, so, they become, bef before they nak go to the following step, it will form the carbocation first. Okay, it's a step by step process. Uh, so you can include all of that. Baru you dapat maka perlu form maker nizam. Okay, uh, so ini the formation of carbocation is very important because when kita nampak ada carbocation, you automatically will get one mark for that. Okay, one mark for the formation of carbocation, the correct formation of carbocation. Any other question? Right, if there's no question, okay, let's proceed to uh, checkpoint 15. Okay, which one do you want to, to discuss? Is it A or B? Delay. Sana? Tak ikut B. Kita nak skip je. B, Madam. B. How about the rest? B eh? Kita ikut majority lah. B. B. Okay, B. Okay, let's go for B. B sebenarnya senang. Okay? Tak apa. Kita try satu and then the next one tu you kena try on your own. Okay? Right, so. Let's look at a question. Draw a structural formula, okay, uh, and, and for the major product form, for the major product form, okay. Uh, so, our focus for organic chemistry is more on the major product rather than the minor product unless it is stated in the question. The question wants the major and minor, then you have to give both. But normally, Okay, we would go for major product. Okay, our interest would be on the major product. Okay, so nampak ada dua soalan kat sini. Satu, draw the major product form. And secondly, you have to write the mechanism. Write, like I said last time, eh, bukannya you kena tulis karangan. Okay, you kena use the reaction scheme just now, yang arrow-arrow tu. Itu write the mechanism. Tak tahu kenapa dia guna write instead of draw. Tapi in organic chemistry, okay, they use the term write rather than draw. Tapi bukan write tu maksudnya you tulis dalam bentuk karangan je. Yeah? No. Okay, ha, ni bukan essay ke apa. Kita dalam dalam organic chemistry, okay, kita explain through through diagrams, through formula, okay. Uh, bukan formula, in organic chemistry kita diagrams lah ataupun reaction scheme. Okay. So, let's go for B. Okay, like I said just now, this is another representation of hydration reaction. 
Okay, so you may use uh, H2O dengan H3PO4 ataupun you may use H3O plus. So it's the same thing. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's, uh, saya nak, nak kembangkan ni. Saya tak suka dalam keadaan macam ni. So that kita, kita, we would able to see everything clearly. So H3O plus, okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, so we have one lone pair only. Uh, so the charge is positive charge. Okay, so the, 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 this is alkene. Okay, so the double bond will attack one of the hydrogen from hydronium ion. Okay, so attack. Uh, mesti dia punya arrow tu mesti melengkung ya. Eh? Dia tak boleh straight arrow. Dia in organic, dia mesti melengkung. Uh, buatlah bagi dia nampak melengkung sikit. Okay, so they attack one of the hydrogen. So the bond between the hydrogen and oxygen will be broken down. So both of the electron will be given back to the oxygen. Okay, alright. So, ah, sebelum tu, sebelum kita kita lupa, okay, uh, kita predict lah dua-dua ni. So, this is secondary carbon and this is also secondary carbon. So, not a problem. And after all, uh, dia duduk dekat OH dekat sini ke, dekat atas ni ataupun dekat bawah is actually the same compound. It's actually the same molecule. Kenapa, macam mana tahu? Sebab you try namakan. Bila you namakan, you dapat nama yang sama, dia sebenarnya produk yang sama. Okay? Nah, you mungkin nampak, oh, OH boleh duduk sini, OH boleh duduk ke atas dengan bawah. You ingat dia produk yang lain. No, it's actually the same thing. You terus, you try namakan dia. Bila you produce the same nama, okay, go through the steps nak, nak naming the compound, you akan dapat nama yang sama, therefore it's actually the same product. Okay, alright, dah tag kan tadi kan? Okay, now without the double bond, okay? Without the double bond, so H will be added first. Katakanlah saya nak masuk H dekat atas. Ah, uh, This is the uh, newly added hydrogen just now from the hydronium ion. Okay, alright, so this one jangan lupa ah uh, will become the carbocation. This is the intermediate. Kena ada kan? Eh? You terlupa letak positif? Sorry, salah. Okay, uh, so ni, this is our intermediate and then later on, we have H2O kan. So this is what the byproduct will be. Okay, oh, okay. Uh, this is H2O, okay. So this H2O will behave as nucleophile. Okay, it will behave as nucleophile. Uh, this one as electrophile. Tadi, the alkene behave as nucleophile. Now, dia jadi electrophile. This one, nucleophile. So, nucleophile will attack the electrophile. To attack. Okay, and attach itself. Okay, hydrogen ni nak tunjuk pun boleh, tak nak tunjuk pun tak apa. Sebab after all, we are doing the skeletal. Skeletal maksudnya hydrogen tak payah tunjuk lah. Initially saya tunjuk sebab it is the one that being added into the molecule. It's from the hydronium ion. Okay, nah, kata kalau nak tunjuk juga, nak menunjukkan hydrogen ni adalah hydrogen yang baru add just now. Okay, so attach as a whole. Okay, seluruhnya akan attach. So dia ada tiga bond dekat situ. So now dia become positively charged because one of the double one of the lone pair is used to form bond with the carbon. Okay, dia hanya ada satu lone pair dia sekarang. See? All right, so this is unstable. Okay, so we need another H2O. Okay, we need another H2O. So this H2O which is the nucleophile will attack one of the hydrogen okay this hydrogen okay and this bond will be broken down so both of the electron will be given both of the electron will be given to the oxygen okay all right so then i'm the hydrogen so so bond can break the situ. so the final product will be 
So everything is exactly the same as the initial one just now, just without the double bond. Okay, and this one, O, tadi kan dah kena ambil H tadi kan? Nah, so dia tinggal satu je lah H. Tak payah tunjuk macam tu pun tak apa. Terus dia jadi H. Nak tunjuk macam ni pun tak ada masalah. Okay, ataupun OH sahaja. Dah siap. Okay, nah, so OH. Uh, uh, apa OH will be added here. So this is the final product. So you may choose this uh, this carbon ataupun this carbon. So either way pun it will produce the same product. Because why? There's no substituents. Tak ada substituent pun dekat sini. Okay? Uh, tak ada substituents lain. Contohnya ada dekat sini ke ada substituents. Uh, there's no substituents. So that's why it will produce the same product. Even though you you choose this carbon, you pilih carbon dekat atas tu ke, this carbon ataupun this carbon. Doesn't, doesn't matter lah. Okay. Cuma Bonnya saya pilih yang dekat bawah. Ya. Yep. Uh, bond yang terasa tu hydrogen bond ke ataupun covalent bond? Covalent lah. Oh, covalent. Hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond kita belajar dekat mana? Dekat intermolecular forces kan? Ingat tak? Ha, Topik 3 ha. semester 1. Intermolecular forces means um, the apa the force yang form between the molecule. Ini dia internal. Okay, ni covalent lah. Sebab dia share dia eh? The electron. Ataupun dative. Sometimes it can form dative. Dative is also covalent. Kan? Nah. Faham dia. Nah. So, dia, dia, dia covalent lah. Basically, basically, dia covalent. Dia akan uh, share the electron lah. Okay? Cuma kita punya focus is more on uh, kita dah way past beyond that. <laughs> kita dah lepas lama dah. Kita dah lebih kepada macam mana reaction boleh berlaku. Uh, kita bukan nak ke ar, kita, yang awal-awal before reaction berlaku how apa bond is formed ha, itu yang dulu yang kita kita dah belajar yang sekarang ni kita nak tahu reaction okay so it's, it's supposed to be covalent lah okay alright okay so ni draw a structural formula sebenarnya you boleh jawab ni dulu lupa pula Okay, terus je. Okay, OH boleh duduk dekat mana? Terus kita boleh predict. Dah siap untuk soalan ni. Lepas tu jawab nombor dua, write the mechanism of high reaction. Uh, okay. Ya. Yeah. Uh, yang dekat last part tu, last step tu, dia punya long pair tu kita tak payah tunjuk kan? Untuk yang last kan? Yang mana lah? Yang ni eh, last. Ini ke? Ah, ah, ah. Yang apa atas tu. Sebab okay. tadi kan ada dua long pair kan, so tak payah tunjuk dah Untuk yang final, final punya uh, Oh this one, this one is it? Ah, ah, ah. ah tak payah tunjuk pun tak apa, nak tunjuk pun boleh So dia ada dua long pair lah, dia kembali kepada having two long pair Tapi kita punya, itu untuk kita punya understanding, kita punya pemahaman kita sendiri Tapi sebenarnya dalam organic chemistry, kita tak, dia macam faham-faham sendirilah Okay, understood Okay, sebab yang ni kita dah belajar masa topik 3 last time. Macam how, masa saya cakap tadi, macam mana bond boleh terbentuk. Tapi kalau you nak tunjuk, it's not a problem. Tak ada masalah. Tapi kalau nak tunjuk, tunjuk betul-betul. Jangan buat satu je. Ha, sebenarnya dia kena ada dua long pair. Ha, bila dia dah jadi OH. Ha, tapi kalau tak nak tunjuk pun tak ada masalah. Sebab this is not our focus. Oh, Madam, apa so ha. kalau dia punya byproduct tu, kalau tak tunjuk pun tak ada tolak makar kan? Ke ada? Ah Tak. Okay, nanti kita tak tolak markah sebab kita fokus on the major product. Tapi kita punya practice, good practice adalah when you have an equation, you must make sure that it is balanced. Okay, you must make sure that it is, it need to be balanced lah. Ha, so kalau macam ni kan, saya just tunjuk yang ini. Okay, so maksud, tapi bila kita check balik, uh, what happened to this one lah? You can not attack. So what happened to this, this, this part right here kan? Uh, ni dah masuk I. So dia akan jadi H3O plus. Uh, itu good practice ni lah. Tapi in in up for our syllabus in organic chemistry for our syllabus. I'm talking about our syllabus eh. Um, 
kita punya marking kita fokus on the uh, the major product the product form maksudnya the the the, the answer uh, the, the the question okay uh, the the answer should be based on the question uh, so kita focus on the major product form so major product lah okay uh, tapi untuk you punya practice kalau good practice mesti kena balance kalau tak balance uh, dia sebenarnya tak lengkap Ah, cuma in organic chemistry kita tak insist, tak insist as in if you somehow miss out ataupun forgot to to write uh, to include the byproduct ataupun to include the minor ke, it's okay. Okay, the 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 mark will not be deducted. Okay, satu lagi sebab nak tolong student lah. Okay, ah, dia katalah major product dia dah dapat. Dia just tak tulis H2O plus. So, kita, kita tolak markah dia. Kan? Ah, so, dia akan hilang markah banyak lah dekat situ. Okay, and then another mechanism pun lupa pula lagi. Okay, ah, so tolak lagi markah dekat situ. So, banyak hilang markah dekat situ. So, kita punya focus is more on the the the, the product form lah. Okay, ah, the focus of the question. Look at the question. Kalau dia tanya, tiba-tiba dia tanya by product form. Kenalah include. Okay. Uh, depends on the question. But normally kita go for the major. Okay. Alright. So this. Uh, this basically the the, the answer. Uh, so macam ni pun kan. You nampak tak? Dia combine kan. Saya suka kembang. Okay. Uh, sebab bila kembang kita nampak everything. Uh, I prefer the one that we have for the contoh just now. Uh, ni. Everything is seen. Okay, so that kita nampak everything is clear there. Tapi this is just for our reference. Okay, so the attack H2O hey, plus. Dia tak specify. Even the bond is not shown here. Okay, uh, tapi follow the, the the example just now. Sebab bila kita nampak clear, kita senang nak ingat. Okay, alright. Any other question related to hydration before we proceed to the next subtopic of alkenes? Okay, alright, so hope everybody's doing well, okay, so far. Alright, so now let's proceed to unsaturation test of alkene. Okay, so uh, uh, we have finished all the five uh, reactions for alkenes. Okay, so you can update your mind map. Okay, uh, please update on the region, the mechanism. Okay, so you... you Terus update cepat. Okay, so you kena prepare for your exam ni eh. Your, you exam ada berapa subjek? Ada lima subjek. Lima courses yang you kena cater. Yeah, kalau everything pun you nak start from the beginning, that's a lot of work. Okay, uh, so this topic ni kena kena terus uh, siapkan, terus boleh duduk for exam. Okay, so jangan buat kerja dua kali lah. Penat lah macam tu. Boleh, tak ada masalah. Ikut, it's up to you. Okay, after all, uh, depends on your preference lah. Kalau you prefer nak ni kan. Tapi at least, kalau dah siap separuh tu, it will be much easier. Okay, it will be very, very helpful. Okay, next will be unsaturation test for alkenes. Okay, so alkenes or unsaturated organic compound may be identified using simple lab tests. Okay, alright. So we can identify ataupun we can indicate the presence of alkenes by using this test. We have three tests, okay, uh, that we that we can apply in order to identify the presence of alkene. For example, kan, dekat dalam lab, you ada dua unknown bottle, chemical bottle, yang you tahu hanya one of it is alkene, the other one is alkene, but you don't know which one is alkene, which one is alkene. Okay, you tahu that information, contohlah. Okay, so what can, what can we do? Okay, what can we, uh, apa nama tu, how can we identify which one is which? Macam mana kita nak identify? Okay, we can go through this test, this simple test. Okay, so kita dah tahu the characteristic of alkenes and the characteristic of alkenes kan? Okay, so alkenes is unsaturated. I mean, it has double bond. Okay, so it is more reactive actually. It is more reactive, that means in a way that it is um, has higher tendency to react with with um, something. 
Okay, all right. So for example, we can test out using bromine in inert solvent ataupun bromine in water. So this basically is known as halogenation. Ataupun bromination. Why do we use bromine? Because bromine is easier. It's easy to prepare. And because bromine is in liquid form. You can also use chlorine. Tapi you know, chlorine kan in dia punya original state is gas. So kalau nak gas, maksudnya is either you kena prepare chlorine into something first ataupun you you flow the chlorine gas. So kena ada piping and what not kan. Kena ada supply of chlorine and chlorine is also um, quite dangerous. Okay, so that's why we go for bromine. Bromine is simpler lah. Okay, we have it in the lab. Okay, uh, so uh, what happened is that this is the observation. Uh, so soalan suka tanya observation lah. Okay, alright. So the solution that have um, that contain the alkene will be decolorized. Okay, when you react the bromine in inert solvent ataupun bromine water with the solution that has alkene, so alkene will decolorize the bromine water ataupun bromine in inert solvent tadi. The bromine lah basically. Bromine kan color dia color orange. Okay, so that's the reaction there. So it change color, it changes the color from orange to colorless. So obviously ada berlaku reaction ketika itu. Okay, uh, so apakah reaction itu? This is what we call um, halogenation. So it can either be, this is halogenation in inert solvent. This is halogenation in water. Okay, this is inert solvent, ether, and this is water. Okay, uh, so even though the product are different, the product form from this inert solvent and H2O are different, but the observation is still the same. Observation is still sama. Okay, orange to colorless. Okay, initially before uh, alkene is added, the color of the bromine solution is orange but when kita add in alkene into this into this bromine solution it changes color from orange to colorless okay uh, so dia akan bagi positive result lah kalau alkene tapi kalau alkene there's no positive result so the the cut orange color will still remain the same okay uh, this if uh, katakanlah the reaction is conducted in dark condition. Okay, sebab kalau alkene, dia kalau nak bagi positive result, dia kena ada light ataupun UV light. Then only it can give positive result. Maksudnya positive as in there will be reaction taking place. Okay, uh, so senang je. Boleh react dengan bromine, so kita boleh identify, oh, there's a presence of alkenes in the solution. Okay, right. Number two, reaction with cold dilute alkaline KMnO4. So this is known as Bayer's test. So these are the Bayer's reagent. Okay, uh, so you can specify, okay. So it should be cold, it should be diluted. That means we have more water in the solution. And the condition should be in alkaline condition. Okay, so... Uh, the reagent used is KMnO4. This is what we call oxidizing agent. Okay, it is used to oxidize others. So, in a way, this is redox lah. Okay, it is used to oxidize others. As you can see, nampak ada berapa banyak oksigen di atas tu? Ada empat oksigen. So, this oxygen will be used to oxidize others. That's, that's why dia adalah a very strong, very strong eh? Very strong oxidizing agent. You oxidize others, but gear itself will undergo reduction. Okay, uh, so this is Bayer's test. You punya condition cold diluted alkaline KMnO4. Uh, alkene react readily with Bayer's reagent. Okay, the purple color of the MnO4 minus solution will disappear in a way. Dia adalah decolorization lah. It's the same as bromine just now. It's decolorization still. Okay, so it will decolorize the purple color into colorless solution and you will also observe a brown precipitate of MN4 oxide, 
appears. Sebab dia oxidizing agent kan, dia oxidizekan orang, dia akan reduce. Okay, so dia, you akan observe the um, brown precipitate at the bottom of the uh, tube, at the bottom of the test tube. Okay, so you can mention the color, the purple color of KMNO4 will be decolorized into colorless solution and you will also observe the brown precipitate at the bottom of the uh, test tube that represent the MN4 oxide. Okay, uh, this will be the observation. Can I mention the color? Eh? Cakap, it, will de it will be decolorized. Decolorized. Daripada apa kepada apa. Okay, uh, so you can specify. Okay, so the organic product is a diol. Okay, uh, diol, OL stand for uh, the homologous series that ends with all will be alcohol lah. But di represent two, kan? So we have two OH group. Okay, two OH group will be added into the molecule. Okay, okay, look at the example. So this is alkene lah. Okay, so this is alkene. So obviously the, the pi bond will be broken down. Okay, so oxidation lah. Basically, dia adalah oxidation. Okay, it will be broken down. So uh, this akan ada... One extra bond there, okay? So OH will be added for both carbon. And so this is what we call diol lah. So dia adalah alcohol, tapi dia ada dua hydroxyl group there. Okay? Uh, so alkenes are oxidized readily by the Bayes reagent. So this is an oxidation reaction actually. Okay? Cuma OH yang akan dimasukkan. Uh, this is number two, reaction number two that we could use to identify the presence of alkene. The, to check on the unsaturation test. Unsaturation test to not check the double bond lah. Okay? Right. Uh, that's why you have to specify reaction with hot acidified potassium manganate, KMNO4. Okay? So, nampak tak beza dia? So, kalau you just tulis KMNO4, which reaction that you are referring to. You nak refer kepada um, uh, the third one ni ke, hot acidify, ataupun you are referring to the Bayes test just now. So that's why you have to specify. Okay, alright. So ini hot lah. Ini kali hot and then acidify. Okay, so result ataupun observation. Kena ada observation. The purple color of the solution will turn colorless. Again, it will be decolorized. Okay, it will be decolorized. Eh, tapi they just mentioned dekat sini MnO4- minus will be reduced to Mn2+. Plus. Okay, ha, so they tak mention in terms of other precipitate ke apa, they tak mention in terms of that. Yang they mention in terms of precipitate will be number 2. Okay? Right. Okay, let's look at in terms of the product. What actually happened during this oxidation? This is also oxidation guys. Sama, oxidation sebab you are using KMNO4. KMNO4 is a strong oxidizing agent. Okay, so this is oxidation. Tapi apa beza this oxidation dengan just now? The the oxidation just now. From Bayes test just now. Okay. During this reaction, this oxidation reaction, cleavage of the double bond will take place. Tadi yang sebentar saja tadi, the pi bond. The pi bond is broken down. Tapi sigma bond tu remain sebagai single lah. Cuma pi bond saja yang di break down. But this one, they break the double bond. Double bond tu break. Pecah dua lah maksudnya. Okay, dia bukan break pi bond ke sigma. Dua-dua pi and sigma bond will be broken down. So it will produce, so logically speaking, it will produce two product lah. But dia potong dua kan? So, it will produce two product. So, it can produce ketone, carboxylic acid or carbon dioxide depending on the alkene uh, used in the starting material, in the starting compound. Okay, so the position of the double bond in alkene can be identified. Okay, we can identify the position of double bond. Sebenarnya. Okay, uh, look at the, the first one. Okay, alright, so like I said just now, 
uh, it will cleave the double bond. Okay, so this one will be broken down. Sama, ini pun. Dia akan break habis. So, dia akan product, produce dual product. So, ini satu product, ini dua product. Tapi, we go into detail on how they form these two product. Okay, later. Okay, ini. Eh, sorry. Uh, this one. This one and this one. So, basically, dia ada dua product. Okay, nampak tak ni? Ha, sebab dia cleave the cut double bond. Okay. Alright. So, macam mana kita nak tahu. Okay. Ini patutnya maintain lah. Tapi kenapa dia jadi carboxylic acid and then kenapa jadi CO2. Okay. Dia depends. Okay. Alright. So, I just want to highlight on the cleavage of the double bond. So, basically, the cleavage of the double bond of alkene will produce two products. Okay. Will produce two products. And these are the condition that you have to take note. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the contour here. Reaction of alkene with hot acidified uh, K-1O4 where the, uh, the double bond will be cleave. Okay. All right. So look at this first example. Okay. So this is your alkene lah. You identify. Okay. So saya punya tips adalah simple je. Okay, nak, kita nak tahu, kita nak be able to 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 uh, to predict the product form. Okay, kita tahu dia akan break dekat double bond, right? So, you break at the double bond. Okay, so dia akan produce this one. You maintain the structure tu, maintain. Tempat double bond tu, you maintain. And then you place the oxygen. Place the oxygen. Okay, place the oxygen. Same goes to this one. You break and then tempat double bond tu, you place in the oxygen. Okay, simple kan? Alright, so okay, come back to the first first product just now. You could, Next, you can identify how many hydrogen that is attached to the carbon. So, but remember, this is oxidation reaction. So, basically, all the hydrogen will be oxidized. So, kita kena look for the hydrogen. Okay, so we have to look for hydrogen that is directly attached to this carbon yang pegang double bond just now. So do we have hydrogen attached to this carbon? No, we do. Okay, we don't have hydrogen attached to this carbon. So this is the final product form. This is what we call ketone. Okay, uh, sebab dia, dia memang tak ada hydrogen at all. So this is the final product lah. Okay, any class homologous dia ketone. Okay, what about this? Uh, this side right here ataupun this second product here. Okay, as you can see, ini remain. Jangan ubah apa-apa. You do not have to change anything. Even this one double bond pun you maintain, you just replace with oxygen. It has one hydrogen attached to the carbon, right? So, hydrogen will need, uh, will be replaced with, I mean, oxygen will be added to this hydrogen. Okay? Oxygen will be added to hydrogen, so it will become OH. So, nampak tak familiar tak with this functional group? So, this is carboxyl group, right? So, that's why it is called carboxylic acid. Yeah, because it has one hydrogen there. Faham? Okay, let's look at another example. Macam biasa, you draw, you nampakkan the double bond. So, you break aja dekat double bond tu, you potong dua. Okay, tempat yang double bond tu, you maintain the double bond so that you add in the oxygen. Okay, so saya nak buat yang ni dulu. Okay, sebab yang ni ada satu hydrogen. Kita dah buat yang ni kan tadi, yang satu hydrogen just now. Okay, we have one hydrogen there, right? So the double bond tadi, kita maintain, kita letak oxygen. So we have one hydrogen. So for one hydrogen only, we just need to add in oxygen. Kita... Kita, apa, kita oxidizekan hydrogen tu by adding the O. Okay, by adding the oxygen. So, settle lah this one. This is carboxylic acid. Okay, what if, okay, what if we have two hydrogens attached to the carbon? Okay, if we have two hydrogen attached to the carbon, Okay, so these two hydrogen will be removed, will be totally removed ataupun will be kicked out from the molecule and this bond will form double bond and that double bond will be added with oxygen. Remember, ni kan oxidation kan? Ha, so, it will be added with oxygen. So, this will form 
CO2, guys. Okay, this is only applicable if we have two hydrogen attached to the carbon. Dia takkan ada tiga lah hydrogen dia. Mana boleh ada tiga hydrogen sebab dia kan form double bond. Kan, so maksimum pun dia je ada dua hydrogen. So kalau we have two hydrogen, it will form CO2. If we have one hydrogen only, it will form carboxylic acid. If we don't have, if the molecule ataupun the carbon doesn't consist any hydrogen like this one, so this is what we call keto. We don't have to 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 add in any oxygen to to the alkyl group. Okay, remain as is. Jangan kacau the alkyl group. Kita kacau the hydrogen saja. Okay, ini hydrogen ni jangan pergi kacau pula. Ah, ini hydrogen ni belongs to this carbon. Kita punya target is to this double bond to this carbon lah. Okay, question. Okay, tak ada question. Let's try out check point 16. Okay, uh, draw the structural formula of product form when 3 methyl pentene and 4 methyl 2 pentene are treated with the following reagent. Okay, we have two questions here. So, which one do you choose? Okay, you nak 3 methyl pentene or 4 methyl 2 pentene? So, these two kena undergoes these two, these three reaction. So, pilih satu. Nak yang mana? 3 methyl atau 4 methyl? 4 methyl, madam. 4 methyl. How about others? Ada, ada anyone seconded the ni? Come on. Four metal. Four metal. Okay, alright. So let's go for four metal. Okay, untuk three metal you try on your own. Okay, right. Okay, so first thing first you gonna draw the structure correctly. Okay, four metal to pentene. Nak buat kat mana? Kat sini. Di ruang. Buat di sini eh. Uh, four metal to pentene. Okay, pentene. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Two pentene. Maksudnya kalau saya nak start from here, from right, one, two. So this is your double bond. Okay, one, two. So jangan confuse eh, pasal uh, the, the placement of double bond. Okay, kalau dia kata two, maksudnya is between two and three. Tapi kita pilih the smallest number to represent the location of double bond. Sebab ada juga yang confuse bila two pentene diletak dekat satu, dua. Okay, bukan kat satu dua, dia dekat dua dengan tiga. Tapi kita pilih dua, nombor yang kecil masuk dekat dalam nama dia. Okay, alright. So, hope uh, that everybody clears with that. Somehow, bila buat tutorial tu, saya notice ada kesalahan-kesalahan yang sebegitu rupa. Okay, alright. First, dia react dengan apa? Uh, belum habis. Four metal, okay. This is number one, number two. And then... Number one, number two, number three, number four. So we have metal group here lah. Okay. Uh, so we have metal group. Jangan tertinggal eh metal group ni. Kena make sure that everything is there. Okay. First reaction between whole diluted alkaline MnO4. Boleh balik je lah. Alright, so this is known as Bayer's test. Okay, Bayer's test, ingat kita dah belajar tadi yang nombor dua, reaction nombor dua, Bayer's test. That means it's, it, it is an oxidation reaction, but the product form will be diol. Maksudnya OH, we have two OH group um, in the molecule. Okay, uh, so that is for Bayer's. Terus, terus kena hafal lah. Okay, a cold diluted alkaline, Bayer's test. Uh, so, product dia, basically, you draw everything the same as the initial one just now, but without the double bond. Itu saja. So, double bond dekat 2 dengan 3 kan? So, ganti dengan OH. Uh, dah, siap. This will be your product. Okay, number 1. Then, number 2. Apa ni? Cord acidified. Yeah, Mn4. Okay. 
Imenofa ni selalu kat bawah. Eh, selalu kat atas lah. Eh. Buat macam ni. Kadang-kadang dia nak represent the hot tu. Dia buat macam ni. Acidified. Okay, Imenofa. So, dia buat heat. Ha, ni represent the heat. Ha, ni menunjukkan hot lah. Ataupun you can also uh, write the word hot air. Okay. Uh, so, representation dia sama. Okay, so bila hot, okay, identify. Ini pun still oxidation, tapi dia hot kan? Bila hot, dia akan belah. Dia akan cleave. So, dia akan belah ni jadi dua. Okay, so saya punya suggestion adalah you beginners, you maintain the structure. Macam mana you lukis tu, you maintain, cuma you pecah dua saja. You jarakkan dia. Unless you dah pro lah. You dah pro, you boleh pusing-pusing tu. Itu itu cerita lain lah. Okay, uh, at the end of the day, dia akan combine kan. I mean, kalau you nak jadikan dia alkin, you cantum balik. But, one thing yang you kena be careful. You kena identify the presence of hydrogen. How many hydrogen attached to that? Uh, to that uh, two carbon yang ada double bond just now. Okay, kita just identify dulu. Kita nak be careful eh. Kita takut kita miss out. So, dekat sini, this carbon, we have one hydrogen sebenarnya. Satu hydrogen here. Okay, satu... Dua, tiga, empat. Ha, baru cukup dengan empat. This one also we have one hydrogen. Ha, yang kita tak nampak. You kena be careful. Okay, so you break. Okay, pen merah balik. Okay, it's exactly the same as just now. Okay, you will never bond dia tu pun. You maintain dekat kawasan itu. Okay, alright. And then hydrogen tadi, ingat. Dia akan jadi O. Sebab dia consists of one hydrogen sahaja. Directly attached to the carbon. So, this is the pro first product form. And secondly, okay, uh, ni, ni dah berbond dia kan. Lukis exactly sama. Jangan ubah apa-apa. Kalau, kalau you dah, uh, kalau you tak mahir lagi, you you just jarakkan dia. Then letak oksigen. Okay, and then the hydrogen here. Okay, ada satu hydrogen. You can letak OH. So, there you go. So, you have the two products. So, both of them are also carboxylic acid. Dua-dua pun carboxylic acid. Okay, sebab so, dua-dua ada satu hydrogen. Siap. Okay, alright. How about the third one? Br2 in CCL4. Mana nak buat ni? Eh? Buat kat bawah ni. Br2 in CCL4. E C C L four. Ha. Okay. Ah, this is very simple. This is halogenation. So draw. One, two, three, four, five. Always count back. Okay. Always recount balik. So dia akan letak B R dekat sini. B R. Ha. Dah. In inert solvent eh. Yeah, this is inert solvent. So maksudnya dua dua B should be B R. Bukan satu B R satu O H. No eh. Because dia in inert solvent. Siap. Okay. Alright. So let's just uh, go through question two very quickly. Tak adalah nak solve. Just nak give you idea on how to solve it. Okay. Question two. Treatment of X with hot acidified KMNO4. So maksud ni ni yang ada cleavage of double bond just now. Like uh, reaction number two here. Okay. Producers. CH3, CH2, COCH3 and CH3, COOH determine the structure of X. Ha, kat sini daripada produk, you kena form balik alkin. Reverse pula. And just now, you forward kan? And now you reverse. Dia bagi dua produk, how do you predict the structure of alkin? Okay, alright. So, I would suggest you to start from the product lah. Okay, draw the product dulu. Product, this is ketone. Okay, this is carboxylic acid. How do you draw this carboxylic acid? Uh, you nak buat expanded ke? You nak buat skeletal ke? Tak kisah. Kalau you, you prefer to use expanded, then go ahead. Okay, uh, saya nak cepat, saya terpaksa guna skeletal lah. Sebab kalau expanded, lambat sikit. Okay, CH3, COH. Katalah, kita try buat lah uh, expanded pula. Hmm, C, tapi tak expanded, tak fully expanded lah. Eh. Uh, CH3. This is carboxylic acid. Nampak tak? How about this one? This, this, how do, how would you draw this one? So, you have CH3. 
C H2 dan C double bond O. So nampak tak ni? Kat tengah ni. C double bond O and then you have C H3. Ini <laughs> expanded campur dengan condense. Okay. Uh, in this is ketone. So apa you, yang macam mana cara yang supaya you dapat balik alkin? You combine lah balik ni. You pusingkan. <laughs> you pusingkan cantum tempat ni. And be careful. Dekat OH tu you kena remove the O. And replace with hydrogen only. Okay. Reverse kan. Uh, so ini sepatut. Ini should be removed. Uh, then we have your X. Okay. Itu uh, untuk beginner punya style lah. Siapa dah pro, rasanya dia dah boleh nampak. Macam ni, okay, dia combine. So, you can you can produce your own, apa nama tu. Bukan produce your own. I mean, you boleh cantikkan lagi you punya, you punya, you punya structure tu. So, that it looks proper. Okay. Uh, tapi, saya suggest you cantum dulu. Keadaan tu. Cantum. And then, you try uh, cantikkan. Uh, redraw balik the structure supaya dia produce the same structure tapi dalam bentuk yang proper ok right ok habis untuk alkins oh my ok so now we are going to move to Alkyl halide. Okay, before that, do you have any question related to alkenes just now? Before we proceed, ada ke soalan? Okay, alright, since there's no question from the floor, okay, so I assume that everybody understand it, okay, everybody somehow lah manage lah to, 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 to get the, 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 the content of the uh, al uh, alkin just now, okay, just sikit je, part dia tu, dua like, dua, Dua subtopik je tapi kita punya coverage hours dia sampai sejam eh. <laughs> Bila dah habis ni. Okay. Alright. So now let's move on to alkyl halide. So these are the learning objective that you should uh, be able to uh, cover. Okay. Once you have completed this topic. Okay. This subtopic. Uh, so it's quite a lot. Okay, we have a lot of of uh, learning objective for alkyl halide. So alkyl halide pun antara functional group yang quite famous lah. Okay, and then we have uh, uh, few uh, few mechanism, two mechanism from this alkyl halide sub topic. Okay, uh, alkene just now we have two mechanism also kan. Uh, alkyl halide also we have two mechanism. So they, that's why they quite famous. Okay, right. Okay, moving on. The introductory part of alkyl halide, the structure of alkyl halide itself. So, other than alkyl halide, it is also known as hello alkanes. Okay, hello means halogen, alkanes mean alkanes lah. That means one of the hydrogen of alkene is being replaced with halogen. Okay, so this is the general formula of alkyl halide. So basically, it's the same as alkenes. It's just that one of the hydrogen is being replaced with halogen. So sepatutnya CnH2n plus 2, tapi dia H2n plus 1, and then dia ada X. Okay, because one of the hydrogen is now replaced with halogen. Okay? Okay. Um... So the X can be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. So halogen can be any either any of these uh, halogen atoms. Okay. So the functional group will be Rx. Okay. Uh, so the target of the reaction will be uh we will be this this bond lah between the alkyl group and also halogen. So in alkyl hal halogen atom bonded to one of sp3 carbon as shown here. Okay, so as you can see, um, it is saturated. 
Okay, so the, the, the carbon are all saturated. As saturated means all the bonds are single bond. All the bonds are single bond. So, kita boleh imagine tak? Kalau bo all bonds are single bond, that means uh, the reaction will be substitution. Okay, the reaction will be substitution reaction because they are penuh. They are fully occupied with single bonds. Okay, so the react dia tak boleh tambah. Kalau addition, dia tak boleh tambah form bond lagi. Jadi lima bond. No, it's not possible. Okay, so the only, the, the reaction that is possible for alcohol will be Uh, will be known as substitution reaction in general. Eh? Okay. Okay. The common uses of alkahalide. So, of course, alkahalide has many application. Okay. A lot of application. It can be used as solvents. Okay. It can, it can also be used as reagent. Uh, for example, uh, for the preparation of another reagent that is known as Grignard reagent. So, we will learn this in, um, in the later slide. Okay. Later, we will get into this uh, preparation of Grignard reagent. It can also be used as anesthetic, okay, uh, as freons, okay, as pesticide, okay. Uh, so these are the example of uh, alkyl halide, okay. So we have uh, halogen in the molecule. Uh, doesn't mean that, uh, apa, uh, bila cakap alkyl halide tu, mesti ada satu je halogen, not necessarily. Can have more than one. Okay, like what uh, we have uh, in the example here. Okay, right. Classification of alkyl halide. Okay, so we can classify alkyl halide based on methyl halide, primary halide, secondary halide, and tertiary halide. Okay, so this is almost the same as uh, the degree of carbon last time that we have learned in previous slides. Okay, um, where we have to classify the degree of the carbon. Okay, all right, sama saja, very simple. Okay, let's look at the, uh, even though we have the explanation here, okay, uh, this is just to justify how do we classify the alkyl halide. Tapi dia sebenarnya very straightforward. Okay, all right. Okay, so we have methyl halide, primary halide, secondary halide, and tertiary halide. Okay, let's start with, primary halide lah. Okay. Alright. So, why do we call this molecule as primary halide? Okay. Dia punya tips dia. Okay. To classify the alkyl halide, it depends on the degree of the carbon that halogen is attached. Okay, they depend kepada carbon yang attach kepada halogen tu, dia punya, dia punya degree of the carbon tu apa? For example, look at this primary halide. Okay, so this carbon, you identify dulu, okay? So, we have uh, halogen attached to this carbon and kita identify this carbon is primary carbon. So, that because it is attached to only one carbon. So, the primary carbon, right? So, therefore, this halide... And then this alkyl halide is known as primary alkyl halide. Simple saja. Same goes to secondary. So this carbon that is directly attached to the halogen is also attached to another two carbon. Satu, two. So this carbon is considered as secondary carbon. Therefore, this alkyl halide is known as secondary alkyl halide. Tertiary alkyl halide pun sama. So, this carbon is attached to another three carbon. So, this halide is known as tertiary halide. Okay, now let's go back to methyl halide. Why is it called methyl halide? Kenapa dia tak dipanggil primary halide? Sebab apa? In order to be called primary halide, the carbon must be attached to another carbon kan? Tapi carbon ni, dia attach kepada mana-mana carbon ke? Mana ada. Therefore, dia tak boleh dipanggil primary halide. Okay? Dia tidak boleh dipanggil sebagai primary halide. Therefore, it is called as methyl halide. Methyl sebab dia, ni kan grup methyl ni. Ha, CH3. So, that's why it is called methyl halide. Not primary halide. 
Okay, sebab this carbon is not attached to any other carbon. So, dia adalah methyl halide. So, dia ada methyl, primary, secondary, tertiary. Okay, alright. Moving on. Apa pun dah ni? <laughs> Structure of alkyl halide. Okay, alright. So, carbon and halogen have different electronegativity. Okay, so this is our, this is our focus lah. Okay, so we have carbon and we have halogen. So we know that carbon is less positive than halogen or halogen is more electronegative than carbon, right? Okay, so this will cause the bond to be highly polarized. Polar, polarized lah, polar. Wujud bila elektron yang di-share tu tidak di-share secara sama rata. They still sharing, tapi instead of, it should be placed at the middle lah, supposedly, baru kita kata equal sharing kan. Tapi since they both have different electronegativity, the shared electron will be biased towards the side of atom that is more electronegative. Okay, that is more electronegative. Sebab dia, dia, dia punya power tu lebih kuat. So, dia boleh tarik the electron towards itself and cause the bond to be polarized. Polarized maksudnya wujudnya kutub negative, partially negative and partially positive. Okay, alright. So the C, the carbon atom is electron poor, which has the partial positive charge, making it somewhat electrophile and this will attract the nucleophile. So as you can see, so carbon will be uh, will will have a uh, partial positive charge. It will be slightly positive. This one will be slightly negative, and this cause this carbon to become electrophilic. Okay, electrophilic. So the electrophile they behave sebagai electrophile, and this one will behave as more towards nucleophilic. But our focus is on the carbon. Okay, but carbon tu yang pegang the the, the halogen. Ah, so this carbon is electrophilic ataupun electrophile. It behave as an electrophile. Okay, so most reaction of alkyl halide result from breaking the polar bond. Like I said, the target would be on this bond because bila dia polarize, this sebenarnya sangat sangat fragile. Okay, sebab dia, dia punya bond tu, dia punya elektron tu is not shed in the middle, dia shed, I mean dia, dia dah jauh dah, dia far away from the carbon. Kalau ada orang kacau sikit je, it will be broken down. Dia akan break, dia akan cleave. Okay, uh, so that's why the, the target of the reaction will be on this bond. Okay. Lah, to CLBR and iodine. Okay, uh, as we go down the group, the electronegativity decrease. Okay. Is it? Yep. All right. Okay, so like I said, every functional group will have its own naming system. Ada dia punya naming system. Dia punya proses dia adalah nomenclature, naming and then reaction. Naming, reaction, naming, reaction. Okay, tapi basically dia punya basic nomenclature punya system is the same as what we have learned in apa in our previous lecture yang kita cover agak panjang, agak lama sikit. Okay, uh, so itu dia punya basic steps. Uh, yang ini mungkin ada ada few modification depending on the functional group. Maybe nama akhir dia tu kalau alcohol, uh, kalau alkin, dia ends with A and E, alkins. Alkin, the ends with E and E. Alkahelite, uh, then uh, dia, uh, sorry, alcohol, the ends with OL. Okay, uh, those kind of thing. Uh, so, dia, kita akan ada sikit slide on that part. Ta tapi tak go detail into that lah. So, basically, dia punya, dia punya naming style sama dengan what we have learned earlier. Okay, uh, it's just that ada few things yang you kena consider lah. Okay. Members of the class are commonly called alkahelites but they name systematically as haloalkanes, where we treat the halogen as a substituent on a parent alkane chain. Kita treat the halogen, okay, treat the halogen as 
substituents. Okay, maksudnya kita tak prioritize pun the halogen. Ah, ni macam kalau alkenes kan double bond kita prioritize the halogen kan. Kita prioritize the double bond. Maksudnya the the long chain need to consist of double bond. But for this one kita tak perlu consider the kita prioritize kan this halogen. No, not nest. I mean, uh, we don't have to do that. Okay, uh, tapi later on bila kita come to a point where kita kena choose, okay, kita ada metal dengan ni dekat dekat uh, apa numbering yang sama, which one we should which one should we choose? Kita akan go for alphabetical order, kan? Uh, benda macam tu itu still sama lah dengan what we have learned earlier. Okay, alright. So step number one, macam biasa, you have to find the longest chain and name it as the parent. Cari The longest chain. Okay, tapi uh, um, like alkene, okay, alkene you kena make sure that double bond should be in the longest parent chain. Tapi for this one, tak payah tak payah prioritas the halogen. You cari macam biasa the longest and continuous chain. But you treat the halogen as substituents. Macam you treat metal, macam you treat ethyl, propyl, ah, macam tu lah you treat for halogen. And then, number the carbon of the parent chain beginning at the end nearer the first substituent, whether alkyl or halo. Okay, the second step is to 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 consider the, the lowest number possible. Okay, once you dah identify the longest chain, you kena you kena uh, numbering, the lowest numbering possible. Okay, tapi bukan sebab you prioritize kan, oh ada bromine, so you kena bromine kena the lowest number possible. No, not necessarily eh. You kena consider, okay, dekat kawasan ni banyak, banyak substituents. So, kita kena better we should start from here. Okay, uh, from left, for example. Because the target is to make sure that the, the, the substituent to have the lowest number possible. Okay, the lowest number possible. Right, if different halogens are present, number all and list them in alphabetical order. Okay, katakanlah kita ada iodo dengan bromine. Ah, uh, So, macam mana kita nak namakan dia, kita akan consider in terms of alphabetical order. Okay, bukan consider in terms of numbering. Eh. Jangan mesti ingat, okay, number yang nombor depan mesti yang kecil, 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 besar. No, bukan macam tu. Bila you nak namakan, nak letak dalam satu perkataan, dalam satu nama, you kena consider alphabetical order. Sebab bila numbering tu, you dah buat daripada awal dah numbering tu. Okay, you dah assign daripada awal dah numbering tu. Next will be based on alphabetical order. So that's why you nampak 4, bromo, 2, 5. Bukannya 2, 4, 5. Bukan ikut ikut numbering, bukan. Okay, bila nak namakan, you must based on alphabetical order. Because that is the final step. Okay, right. Moving on. Ini yang kita recap je lah ni. If the parent chain can be properly number from either end, either end by step 2, begin at the end nearer the substitute that has alphabetical precedence. Okay, ah, macam ni yang maksud saya yang kita nak kena consider tu. Okay, kalau this one, kalau you start from bawah going up, you akan dapat number 3, number 4, number 5. Betul tak? Kalau you start from top, to bottom, you still akan dapat number 3, number 4, number 5. Ni, this one. 3, 4, 5. So, ini ah, okey lah ni. 3, 4, 5 okey. Dah dia punya numbering dah the lowest, the smallest. Tapi isunya sekarang, siapa nak dapat number 3, siapa dapat number 4, siapa dapat number 5. Ah, in that case, kita kena consider alphabetical order. Okay? Ha, kalau nombor tiga, sepatutnya ayodo dululah. Eh, nombor tiga mana? Ha, ayodo. Okay. Uh, sorry, kalau nombor tiga dekat yang contoh satu, ayodo. Nombor four, apa? Ital. Nombor five, baru ni. Ital. So, siapa datang dulu? I lah. I datang dulu. So, ital will be named first. Ethyl duduk kat mana? Kat carbon number 4. So, 4 dash ethyl. Dash 3, 3 iodo, 5 methyl. Bukan macam ni. Okay. Uh, 
bukan begini. I, uh, five iodo. So kita kena consider in terms of alphabetical order. Sebab dia punya numbering dia dah sama. Okay. Yes. Alright. Okay. Question one. Nak try yang mana? Question one, A, B, C, or D? Hmm? B. B. How about the rest? Setuju tak nak buat B? Setuju. Okay, B lah. B. B eh, B for ball eh? Okay, B for ball. Okay, B for ball. One. Okay, so identify the longest parent chain. So obviously we have cycloalkene here. So one, two, three, four, five. You don't forget the cyclo. Nak tulis kat mana ni? Cyclo. Okay, ada berapa? Lima kan? Ada five carbon. So, it should be cyclopentane. Okay. And then, um, uh, so kita, okay. Ah, okay. Alright, so kita nak, uh, either way pun kita akan dapat nombor satu, nombor dua. Ataupun kalau kita start from here, one and two. Betul tak? So, kita akan tetap dapat satu dengan dua. Tapi, siapa will be assigned sebagai nombor satu? Siapa will be assigned sebagai nombor dua? Okay? Alright. Ini bukan kes kita nak compare alphabetical order ke apa. Belum lagi. Ini awal-awal lagi. Kita, we are going to assign this carbon as carbon number one. This one as carbon number two. Why is that so? Because this carbon... Okay, has two substituents attached to it. Okay, tak payah nak consider alphabetical order ke apa. Tak, belum lagi ke tahap tu. Maksudnya, this one will be assigned as carbon number one just because of this carbon has two substituents attached to it. But this one has only one substituent attached to it. Faham? Ha, so, this will be automatically number one. Carbon number one, carbon number two. Okay, alright. So, kita ada metal group. Dua metal group there. And then satu iodo. So, kita ada iodo dengan metal. Mana datang dulu? Ha? Baru kita nak consider dia punya uh, alphabetical order. Sebab kita nak letak dalam nama. Bila nak letak dalam nama, kena consider alphabetical order. Okay, alright. So, iodo comes first. So, iodo has, uh, the, the, the location of iodo is at carbon number one. So, one iodo. Dash, okay, and then metal group, we have carbon number one and carbon number two, right? So, it should be one comma two. Since we have two metal there, so it should be di. Don't forget the prefix. One, two, because there's the word, yeah? So, di, and then me, pile. Okay? Right, so itulah nama dia. Okay, number question two, which one? Aduh. Nah, yang mana? A ke B? A, madam. A, alright. Lagi? Sokong ke A? A, madam. Hmm? B, okay, uh, lagi uh, kena ada, uh, kalau ada dua option, kalau ada dua rival macam tu, kena ada yang sokong. Okay, next. Nak A ke nak B? A, okay. Dua lawan satu. Okay, lagi. B, madam. B, madam. Tiga, tiga, dua. Okay, tiga A. Uh, dua orang pilih B. Okay, lagi satu. Mungkin lagi satu. B, Madam. Ah, B pula. Okay, tiga, tiga. Okay, lagi satu. Last, last. B, Madam. B. B eh, confirm B eh. B, Madam. B, Madam. Right, B. Okay, let's do B then. Okay, isopropyl cyclohexane. Cyclo, alah cyclo, cyclohexane. That means it must be cyclic lah. Okay, one, two. Okay, buat cantik-cantik istilah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Cyclohexane. 
Uh, so, kita ada 4 isopropyl dekat carbon number 4. Let's start from here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Lama. Sempit. Okay. Alright. So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Isopropyl. Macam mana, macam mana nak buat isopropyl? Haa. Uh, ini isopropyl. Dia propyl and then dia ada iso. Okay. Dia ada tiga. Propyl means dia ada tiga carbon. Satu, dua, tiga. Tapi dia attach dekat carbon number dua. And then dia ada methyl group yang sama. So it is called iso. Iso methyl lah sebenarnya. Tapi it is isopropyl because it has three carbons. Okay. Alright. And then at carbon number one, we have two bromine. Due to di bromo and then we have two numbers here at the same carbon. This is PR. This is also PR. Okay. Ah, siap lah. It depends lah you nak, you nak start daripada mana. Nombor satu ni kalau you nak start dekat sini boleh juga. Okay. Ah, nak start dekat sini pun boleh juga. Depends on your your preference basically. Uh, Madam. Okay. Yeah. Kalau macam soalan macam ni kan dibagi kan so kita boleh kita boleh uh, adik uh, kita boleh apa decide sendiri kan mana kita nak start kalau soalan macam ni dibagi. Hmm boleh boleh decide sendiri. Okay sebab kita bila marking tu kita akan kita akan kira balik kita akan kita akan kira katalah ada student start dekat sini. Dia start bromine dia dekat sini. And then isopropyl 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, isopropyl dia dekat sini. Uh, tak kisah. Okay. So kita akan kita akan tengok dan kita akan namakan balik dia. So tak semestinya. Oh, different people may have different style of drawing kan. Uh, so kita tak boleh macam. Okay ini sepatutnya student kena start nombor 1 dekat sini. Tak boleh macam tu. Dia boleh juga start dekat nombor 1 dekat bawah ni. So dia terbalik lah. Okay. Alright. Okay, ni boleh praktis untuk sek butal. Macam mana sek butal? Maksudnya the, the, uh, dia butal. Okay, tapi dia attach to the parent tu dekat carbon number 2. So, dia secondary. Okay. Right. Okay, saya ni nak masuk juga elimination reaction. Saya nak cover elimination reaction so that you guys will be, uh, will finish at the same apa nama same subtopic as S19 dengan S20 sebab tomorrow kita punya lecture will be combined lecture kan so kena habis samalah kalau tak nanti jenuh pula saya nak meng, nak meng, uh, nak menyamakan dia kan okey so target saya sampai elimination eh okey jom okey dan with nomenclature letak tepi next let's move on to Reaction. Okay. So general mechanism of alkahalite. Like I said just now, kita boleh predict the type of reaction that alkahalite undergoes. So basically, alkahalite undergoes substitution. But to be specific, it should be nucleophilic substitution. Okay. Maksudnya, we want to replace this halogen with something else lah. Not replace with something else. Because dia dah fully occupied kan, all, it is saturated. So, the only way is to replace, replace ataupun substitute. Okay, so we need something that is powerful enough to replace this halogen ataupun to remove this halogen out from the molecule. So, nucleophile is one of the powerful species that can be used to replace the halogen. Nucleophile tu pun tengok juga, ada nucleophile yang lemah, ada nucleophile yang kuat. Okay, ah, so that one will be covered later in the slide. So basically, nucleophile will be replaced into the molecule. Ah, so ini yang nombor satu. Nombor dua, contoh, uh, I mean, uh, reaction yang alkahalite possible nak undergo adalah elimination reaction. Kenapa elimination? Sebab dia dah penuh, dia dah saturated. Okay, ah, dia tak boleh tambah bond. Tapi dia boleh substitute and then the other way, the, the, the other option is to eliminate, to remove out. To remove out for good. Maksudnya keluarkan the halogen out from the molecule. 
Okay, uh, so that is what we call elimination. So elimination ni kita reactkan again nucleophile. Nucleophile ni dalam bentuk base lah. Okay, so apa yang berlaku adalah dia akan remove the hydrogen, one of the hydrogen from the adjacent carbon. Adjacent mean next to. Sebelah yang pegang halogen tu. Okay, dia akan remove. So dia akan keluar, so dia akan form double bond dekat situ. Bila dia form double bond, ini kena keluar. Kalau tak, nanti carbon ni ada lima tangan. Ada lima bond. So, this one need to be removed. Kena keluar. Barulah dia jadi double bond. Ada four bonds. So, this is what we call alkene. Remember tak alkene dulu? Yang kita bukakan dia kan? Yang kita nak letak halogen. Now, alkahelite, kita nak buang, nak jadikan balik alkene. So, dia pusing-pusing balik je kat situ. Okay, alright. So these are the two common reaction that alkahelite can undergo. Okay, kita akan tengok in detail after this. Okay, for the elimination reaction, which is known as D, D means the removal, hydrohalogenation. Hydro means hydrogen and then halogen. So hydrogen will be removed out and also and uh, also the halogen. Okay, pembuangan, the removal of hydrogen and halogen from alkyl halide uh, is the reverse of an addition reaction. Dia adalah opposite of re, uh, addition reaction. Addition, kita masukkan dia kan dekat alkin. Now kita nak keluarkan balik. So dia jadi alkin balik lah. Okay, uh, so alkyl halide will convert to alkenes through this elimination reaction. So, it actually involves the extraction ataupun the removal. Extraction ataupun removal of beta hydrogen. And it can be also called beta elimination. Okay, tiba-tiba ada beta pula kan? Okay, so kalau ada beta, mesti ada alpha. Okay, so how do we identify the alpha and beta carbon? Okay, so kita identify halogen duduk dekat mana. But this is alkyl halide kan? So, this halogen belongs to this carbon, right? So, kalau halogen tu belongs to that carbon, so that carbon will automatically be alpha. But dia yang pegang halogen tu. So, kalau beta adalah adjacent ataupun next to carbon yang next to the alpha carbon. Okay, next to. So, sebelah dia lah, sebelah dia. Exactly sebelah dia. So, this one. So, this is beta carbon. So, kalau dia adalah beta carbon, this will automatically be beta hydrogen. Okay. So, that means ini keluar, yang ini pun akan keluar. Then, baru dia boleh jadi alkin. Right? Baru dia boleh jadi alkin. So, ini nak memperkenalkan you alpha dengan beta carbon. So, we need base. Okay, this is the reagent that we use in order for the elimination reaction to take place. You need to be in base ataupun in alkaline lah, basically. Okay, alright. So, this is how you should prepare the reagent. Okay, this reagent are used to eliminate alkyl halide. They bukan simply pakai uh, alkaline solution ke apa as long as the alkaline not necessarily okay dia ada syarat pula dia ada condition pula dia okay, the preparation of base by reacting alcohol okay you must react either sodium hydroxide or KOH with alcohol uh, so this is the reagent that we use to react with alkyl halide later on so prepare dulu dia punya base dia okay so kena ada alcohol ada OH tu and then react dengan uh, base tu lah KOH kan base Okay, dia tak boleh KOH saja. Dia condition dia tu mesti dalam alkohol. Okay. Ha, dia memang macam tu. Memang dia reaction untuk organic chemistry tu dia dia ada sebab lah. Ada justification. Kenapa dia tak boleh KOH. Dia condition dia tu. Okay. Alright. So what happen is that you, you tengok eh. You jangan risau sangat dengan dia punya belakang-belakang tu. Don't worry so much on that. Sebab what actually happens is that uh, K ni nanti akan combine masuk. So H akan keluar. H dengan OH akan keluar. Combine. So dia jadi H2O. So O kan negatif. O negatif. K is metal kan. Metal is positively charged normally. And memang dia positively charged. So O combine with K. Negatif dengan positif. So this is what we call potassium methoxide. Because this is methanol. 
So, kenapa dia potassium? Because we use potassium just now. How about this one? Like I said just now, ini akan keluar jadi air. So, dia akan combine K dengan O. Jangan keluarkan O, OH ni keluar semua siap-siap kan? -siap, eh? Tak, dia kena, dia kena dengan ada O. Sebab O tu negatif, we, we'll, we'll bind with K plus. So, dia akan jadi potassium third butoxide. Because this is third butanol. Okay, uh, this is ethanol. Okay, so this is sodium ethoxide. Alright, ada yang menyanyi? Okay, uh, so inilah uh, how you should prepare the base. Okay, so you just combine your O dengan sodium plus. Uh, so O dengan K. Jangan buang pula O tu terus jadi macam ni. Nanti ada yang terbuat macam ni. Sebab dia tend to terbuang eh. Ha, dia terus jadi macam ni. This is salah. This is wrong. Dia kena ada O, negatif and A. Ha, sebab positif dengan negatif, they attract one another. Okay, this is only for the base. Later, base ni will be used in the elimination reaction. Bagaimanakah? Okay, belum lagi rupanya. Okay, tu kita dah prepare the base. Okay, later we will use the base. Okay, what happen if there is more than one beta hydrogen? This one should be earlier lah. This slide patutnya awal sikit. Okay, alright. So what happen if there is more than one beta hydrogen? Just now dia hanya tunjuk sebelah carbon kan. What if kita ada more than one carbon lah. Kita ada more than two carbon. Okay, so obviously we may have more than one beta hydrogen. Okay, alright, so identify, okay, so this is bromine, the halogen attached to the carbon, so this is alpha. So, dia punya next two, dia ada dua next two carbon dia tu, ataupun the adjacent carbon. So, both of them also beta. Okay, dua-dua pun beta, so ni beta hydrogen, this is also beta hydrogen. Okay, ah, so masalah pula dekat situ, kan nak form double bond tadi, sebab dia kena keluarkan satu daripada beta Uh, one of the hydrogen from beta kan from beta carbon tapi ada dua pula beta ni uh, nak buang dekat sini ke nak buang dekat sini ya ni tak ada masalah ni memang out confirm hydrogen tu nak buang satu hydrogen kena buang daripada adjacent carbon so which one bila ada mana satu ah mana satu ah there's a rule to decide on that so senang nak bantu kita untuk decide so Your second and final rule is known as safe self rule. So, so far kita ada dua je rule kita eh. Markovnikov and safe self rule. Okay, so based on safe self stated that the product form with the most highly substituted alkene will predominate. Dia punya concept tu, it's almost the same tau as Markovnikov. Dia kurang sama je, dia punya preference tu. Dia akan prefer dekat kawasan yang Kurang hydrogen. Sama. Tapi, produk dia berbeza. CZF covered on more on double bond. Markonikov, they cover on single bond. Okay. ah Itu je dia punya, dia punya perbezaan dia. Tapi, dia punya preference lebih kurang sama. Okay. ah CZF, bila produk untuk double bond. Bila dia produce, nak, nak produce double bond, nak produce alkin. Tapi um, Markonikov last time untuk yang single bond saja, Maksudnya tidak ada double bond. Dia daripada double bond jadi single bond. Yang CZF ni daripada single bond jadi double bond. Ha, see? Dia opposite kan? Okay. So kita ada dua beta hydrogen. Okay. Ha, so issue kan kat situ. So kita akan base on CZF. So based on CZF, the most stable one will be the one that has less hydrogen lah. Ha, so yang ni yang paling stable. So more stable alkene. Okay, the uh, when we have more alkyl group uh, in the molecule, especially to uh, that is attached to the carbon double bond carbon. Okay, uh, that one is better. That one is more stable form of alkene. Compared to this one. Ini tak stable sebab banyak sangat hydrogen. Dia, remember last time yang kenapa alkyl group banyak lagi dia untuk acid. Remember last time yang inductive effect tu. Yang dia membantu menstabilisekan. Dia bagi dia 
the density of electrons towards towards the the apa towards the the, the hydrogen dengan carbon punya bond tu ha case yang sama they help to stabilize the carbon okay alright toh ni contoh okay let's look at contoh okay perut pula base induce Beta elimination reaction generally will give a more stable alkene product. Okay, they prefer alkene, a uh, more stable alkene. Okay, okay. So, for example, this is your alkyl halide. Okay, identify. You punya first step adalah identify the alpha carbon. So, uh, locate the halogen. So this is halogen attached to this carbon. So, this is alpha carbon. So, automatically, dia punya sebelah-sebelah dia tu will be beta. Dia ada dua kan. So, beta, this will be beta prime lah. Nak differentiate between these two. Okay. So, kita identify. So, ni ada dua probability. Okay. So, either this hydrogen dengan Br ni keluar. Ataupun this beta prime hydrogen dengan Br ni keluar. So, yang mana satu dia prefer. Cara dia sama. You identify, okay, you check on this bromine lah, uh, on this brom, on this beta carbon, okay, this carbon, apa, the primary kan, how about this carbon guys, this is secondary kan, maksudnya this carbon is more substituted, maksudnya hydrogen tu dah digantikan dengan satu, dia ada metal group here, nampak, and then dia ada satu lagi hydrogen, how about this carbon, Dia ada dua hydrogen. Dia ada banyak hydrogen dekat situ. Maksudnya this is, this carbon is less substituted. Dia remain asal lah. Maksudnya dia, dia memang initially hydrogen. Yang ni dah diganti dengan metal group. Ha, so mana yang lebih stable? Ha, bila kita buang this hydrogen. Okay, bila kita buang this hydrogen lah. So the double bond will prefer to form... Bila you imagine ni keluar and Br keluar, so it will form double bond between this, this carbon and this one. So this would be the major pro product. And as you can see, we have one alkyl group on each carbon. So dia lebih stable compared to kalau another option adalah kalau dia buang this hydrogen, they remove this hydrogen, so dia akan form double bond here, right? Uh, so kat sini, Dia akan ada satu saja alkyl group yang bulky. But, but how about this one? Dia tak ada alkyl group kat situ. So the, it is less stable. Kalau based on this one. Less stable. Okay. Ha, dia, dia ada satu. This is less stable. Compared to ni kalau ada dua. Kalau kita compare this one lah. Okay. Ha, kalau this one dengan this one. Ha, this is more stable than this one. Uh, so this one we have two, this one we have one. So mana yang lebih stable? Cause lah this two uh, wins over one. Okay. Uh, so ni condition yang you kena consider. Okay. So this is the base yang we we, we use just now in e in alcohol. The base kita ada alcohol. Last one. Banyak kali eh, sesi terlebih eh, minta maaf banyak eh, nanti masih baik uh, time raya ni boleh minta maaf banyak kali. <laughs> okay, okay cuba tengok contoh another example before we end this elimination reaction. Okay, another example. Okay, so this is example, this is alkyl halide because we have halogen in it. Okay, identify the alpha carbon, this is alpha. And then identify the beta carbon yang exactly sebelah alpha. Okay, so this is beta and this is another beta, right? Okay, saya assign beta prime. Bukan ni eh, not this one. Ah, this one. Sebab dia duduk sebelah this alpha carbon. And then identify juga how many hydrogen do we have for this beta? One, two. Sebenarnya kita ada dua hydrogen there. How about this one? We have one, right? Hmm. Buka supaya nampak, okay? Alright, so this one is considered as uh, one, two. So this is secondary carbon, right? How about this one? This is tertiary. Betul tak? Satu, carbon, dua, tiga. So this is tertiary. 
You ada tertiary dengan secondary. Mana yang mana yang menang? Cik menang eh. Okay, ada dua option lah. So there there are two option that the double bond can be formed. Satu uh, uh, this one dia keluar dia form double bond here and the other option is this one. Uh, tapi yang mana yang major, mana yang minor? Uh, yang lebih stable lah. Yang form more stable form of al alkene. Okay, so we have to Uh, we have uh, this one as major pro major product, major alkene, and this one as minor alkene. Sebab apa? Sini kita ada satu uh, substituents, satu alkyl group. But for this one, kita tak consider ni lah. Sebab dia, uh, this carbon, dia, 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 dia consider sebagai as a whole lah. But this one, sebab dia double bond kat sini kan. So this carbon has this al substituent. Okay, has this substituent. Uh, so yang ni dia dah kira dia punya keluarga dia sendiri Dia tak dikira sebagai substituents Okay Alright Itu sahaja Okay just nak predict the location of double bond lah Where should it be? Please Okay kita akan based on set Set Okay Alright so kita ada checkpoint This one you can do it on your own Okay Um Then next we will proceed to substitution. So we are done with elimination. Habis dah. Okay, we we'll proceed with substitution for tomorrow. For tomorrow's lecture. Okay, do you have any questions so far? Related to elimination just now? Okay. Okay, alright. So if there's no question... I think that is all for today. So balik balik ni cepat-cepat buka and then please update your mind map ataupun your your lecture notes uh, ataupun your short note ke whatsoever. Okay, kalau tak ada mind map, tak ada lecture note, tak ada apa ke just go through lah. Okay, and then buat the checkpoint so that you you refresh balik everything. Okay, alright. So itu saja for today. So thank you everyone and see you tomorrow. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Bye-bye.